Hello and bonjour to my review of this year's Monaco Grand Prix. Procession, you could argue. Um, obviously not much overtaking. It's always difficult to overtake around Monaco, so it wasn't exactly the uh, greatest of races, shall we say, this year. But even so, so many star uh, performances um, throughout, throughout the field, I have, to, I have to say. So, yeah, plenty of standout performances, which we'll come on to uh, talk about. But your top three of Max Verstappen, Carlos Sainz and Lando Norris and no Mercedes on the podium uh, this at the uh, Monaco Grand Prix but we'll come on to talk about uh, Mercedes later on but what want to start off um, not talking about top three um, but about Charles Leclerc um, what is it what is it with him and Monaco um, he's never uh, finished a race a uh, Formula One race anyway um, in, in at, his, at his home race and really unfortunate um and heartbreaking in a way you really felt for him that you know he was able to put a brilliant lap in qualifying okay he did put the uh car in the barrier um in in, in q3 um and you know i know there was some social media um skeptics who said he did that on purpose but i don't i personally don't think that you know charles is capable of, of doing that and you know and i think and in, in a way actually i think it proves that actually the fact that he went into the barrier proves that he was actually pushing. So, you know, for for, pe for some people to say that you know he did it deliberately, I don't buy that at all. Um, if if I'm if I'm being totally honest, um, and you know you have to an early signs um from Saturday Saturday evening, um, Ferrari put out, I know put out a tweet um saying that there isn't there hasn't been much uh, damage to to the gearbox, so which meant that Charles you know m may be able to. Um, start from pole on race day, but unfortunately, um, they then found an issue with with the drive shaft, which meant that unfortunately Charles wasn't able to uh, take the start of the Monaco Grand Prix, which is a real shame. Um, because had Charles started the race, then I think more than likely, um, well, he would have had a fantastic shout of um, winning his home Grand Prix in a Ferrari as as, as well. Um, and you know it's been a it's been a while since we've last we've last seen Ferrari on the on the top step of the podium. So had Charles um, you know been able to start the race, had he gone on to win the race, um, in a way it could have you could say it would have been a it would have been a fairy tale um, story, but it wasn't to be unfortunately. But Charles will get his opportunity um, this 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 season. I mean, I'm sure there'll be other opportunities. And you know what Ferrari proved. This weekend is that they had, they had a very competitive package. Um, very impressed, I have to say, with them um, this this weekend. And um, yeah, I thought Charles, other than other than what he did in Q3, and unfortunately, I thought he he looked quick throughout the whole weekend. And uh, yeah, I thought he did really well. And there's a lot of positives that he and the team um, can take. And whilst we're on Ferrari, I might as well come on to talk about Carlos Sainz. He really has adapted to life at Ferrari really well, hasn't he? Um, I, he's done a very good job, and once again, he proved on he proved on race day, and look, obviously qualifying. He had Charles um, not put the car in barrier. I think Carlos would have been in contention for uh, for pole on on Saturday, um, but it wasn't to be. Um, but these things happen in Formula One, and obviously, Carlos no doubt would have been um, heartbroken in a way that he had that opportunity to. Uh, put the car on pole in Monaco in a Ferrari, um, but it wasn't to be. But even so, I thought on Sunday he drove a solid race. Um, you know, obviously he was able to inherit um, second place following, uh, obviously, obviously following uh, Charles not being able to start the race, but also then Valtteri having um, issues with his pit stop, which I want to talk about. Um, but Carlos really did drive a solid race, and um, he, yeah, he, another great job from Carlos and. Um, He's always, for me, he's been one of those standout drivers so far of, of this year. I think he's done a brilliant job. You know, and I think I think I said this at the start of the season, the fact that you no know, Charles won't have it all his own way at Ferrari. And I think so far this year, you have to say um, that is that is proven to be the case. And I think from what I see, um, from what we see on the cameras, you know, Carlos and Charles get on get on really well um, with each other, and they you know, potentially they've got the potential of being at Ferrari, both of them, um, for, for, for many years to come. So, but yeah, another cracking drive from Carlos Sainz and, uh, yeah, probably deserved his, his second place. But we come on to talk about Red Bull 
and uh, Max Verstappen. And uh, well, this is this is what we want, isn't it? From a neutral's point of view, this is what we want to see. You know, Red Bull really taking the fight to Mercedes, and and they're doing that this year. You have to say that it's been a yeah. Now we know um, that Mercedes, I should say, are behind in both the drivers and also uh, the constructors' uh, championships. Not by much. Um, but very, very tight between both teams. And, you know, if this, if this is going to be a sign of things to come for the rest of the season, then I'm all for it. And um, it's only going to make this season even more exciting. More already looking forward to Azerbaijan, which will be in a couple of weeks' time. Um, but, yeah, Red Bull, um, Max Verstappen, you know, he would have, as you know, again, like like Carlos Sainz, you know, he would have been on contention to um, put the car on pole. Um, but because Charles wasn't able to uh, take the start on Sunday, in effect, you know, Verstappen did start uh, from pole, um, albeit he didn't start on the pole position um, on, on, on the grid anyway. Um, but yeah, really, Verstappen, he, he had the race under control, um, you know, and he didn't, there wasn't any major threat from, from behind, if I'm being totally honest. Um, but obviously with Monaco, you know, we saw, you know, we saw with what happened with Charles, you know, once more mistake, and you could end up in the barrier. So, you know, you have to give Verstappen credit for the fact that, you know, he's able to keeps concentration levels up and um yeah really really a faultless weekend really for um for staff and partic particularly on race day and um yeah really really good win and, and for, now we know the first time he's ever leading the formula one uh, championship in his in his career and um, um, no doubt that will give him um confidence not that he not that he isn't not that he isn't confident but you know that that will give him some confidence going into Azerbaijan and I think in a way it will, it will motivate him to want to for him to want to stay there now for, for the for the rest of the season as difficult it may be you know at least it motivates him it gives him motivation to want to actually um stay up front but yeah really good display uh from Max Verstappen as you'd expect um but yeah great win for the Dutchman and also notable mention for Sergio Perez as well obviously not not the most straightforward of Saturdays uh for the Mexican Qualifying ninth, um, although it, you know he ends up being quickest in FP1 on on Thursday, and then uh, qualifying, you know, obviously was disappointed. So he needs to really um, work on that. Um, check out, I think, just to yeah, just be even more right up there on 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 Saturdays, you know, to be in amongst those Mercedes and and, and his team at Verstappen. But on Sunday, um, strategy def definitely brought brought him back into the game, and um, yeah, really really good strategy. Uh, call from from Red Bull team, which meant that Checo was able to when he when he pitted, he was actually able to come out in front of you know, the likes of Sebastian Vettel, Lewis Hamilton, and Pierre Gasly um, as well. So yeah, really good call um, for Red Bull and Checo drove drove a good race as as well, and you know good good points for the team as well, which meant that Red Bull have leapfrogged um, Mercedes in the constructors. So yeah, really really good effort actually from Checo um, on on Sunday. So just needs to improve his qualifying performance but i believe it'll come i believe it'll come for checo and um it's it's not been a bad start actually for sergio at life like as a red bull driver i wouldn't say it's been spectacular but it's been but it's been solid it's been it's been good but just needs to improve um his his qualifying performance but i believe but i believe it will it will come and checo ended up just behind uh just ended up finishing behind um lando norris um what, what, what can you say um, about Lando? Now, he continues um, to drive the wheels off that McLaren, and he's made a fantastic start to, to, to 2021. Another podium uh, for Lando, and what a way to you know, celebrate you know, signing a multi-year um, contract before the Monaco Grand Prix by actually, you know, by actually finishing on, on the podium. Um, but yeah, another strong weekend for Landon Norris. He did have the off weekend um in, in Spain, but but you are gonna have those weekends. Um yeah, really good qualifying from Lando and um another solid race from the Brit. And um it's no wonder McLaren uh, offered him more no you know, he's been able to well Lando signed a new contract with the team um because you know, McLaren are going places, they really are. And, you know, as I mentioned in the preview, that they're on an upward trajectory. And um, I wouldn't be surprised if McLaren end up scoring more podiums. And I did make a prediction that McLaren would win a, 
would win a race this year and I, and I still I still stand by that I definitely think that is possible and particularly with Azerbaijan coming up you just don't know what's going to happen at that Grand Prix so that might be an opportunity for McLaren to take advantage if you know, anything does happen um, in, in front of them but yeah another fantastic drive from Lando Norris and uh, yeah really good drive whilst one half of the McLaren garage was celebrating the other half not so much very difficult weekend actually for Daniel Ricciardo I'm really surprised actually by how by how much he struggled really um this at uh, the Monaco Grand Prix but you know it's you know it's perhaps perhaps it is taking a little bit too long um not, not in that terms but actually perhaps it's taking it him much longer than he would have liked um to adapt to the McLaren car but then but then he also had you know when he first joined Renault as well it took him time to to adapt to life at Renault and yet you know he started and then when he got into a rhythm when he started to deliver those results then performance started to improve so I think with Daniel you just need to give him a little bit more time um but but the results will come I'm confident that that will that will happen um and we look we all know that Daniel is a fantastic driver you know he's won Grand Prix because he deserves to he's a Grand Prix re Grand Prix winner for, for, for a reason um, because he's got the talent he's got everything there he just needs to yeah I think I think the sooner he can get just get to grips with that McLaren I think the better really for the team and obviously that's going to be important in their battle for uh, third in the constructors against Ferrari but um, look I've got obviously it's been not been a the most straightforward of starts to life as a McLaren driver for Daniel Ricciardo but you know I, I still think there's a lot more to come uh, from Daniel and um, yeah, I definitely think he, he'll be able to turn things around and um, I really hope so because like I said, Daniel's got the talent, he's proven that and um, I, I really would love to see him on, on the podium this, this year for McLaren. So yeah, whilst one half of this garage uh, McLaren might not have been celebrating, they like for the other and uh, yeah, once again, congratulations Lando on uh, on finishing on the on the podium. Um, another team who had a lot to... Uh, I'd be happy about uh, the weekend. Aston Martin. Um, look, we know that it's not been the. Uh, it's been a difficult start to the season uh, for Aston Martin, but you know, finishing fifth, finishing eighth, um, that that will give them a lot of confidence going into the rest of the season. And I'm really happy for Sebastian Vettel actually. Um, look, actually, it's actually hurt actually to see him. You know, within this last year, year and a half. You know, you could argue that it. You know, it seems struggle, you know, because it's not, you know, we know Sebastian offers so much more and, you know, what he's able to do in Monaco, I think, can um, prove that. And I remember, you know, during the race, obviously, when he made that pit stop, he just um, had that, you know, going up, going up the hill and having that battle with Pierre Gasly. And, you know, I really thought they were going to collide with each other. But um, now, to be fair, I mean, I know they're both, I know both Pierre and, um, Seb said that they they could see see well they they knew each other were close but they couldn't actually you know see see each other so actually but to be fair to Seb actually from the replays I saw he did give uh, PA in in enough space and um, yeah I mean to be fair in that in that instance anyway I think Seb did definitely show that tenacity that aggression that we we haven't really seen um, I think in, in 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 recent years but it was good to see Seb you know, show that and. Um, you know, and I hope that fifth place in Monaco gives him confidence because we know he's a he's a world class driver, he's a four times world champion for a reason. And um yeah, great to see Seb um finishing fifth. Um obviously obviously he'd want to be finishing higher, but even so at, at this point where Aston Martin are, I think they would happily take fifth place finishes right now, um, regularly. And um yeah, really really good display from Sebastian and uh, hopefully that gives him confidence going into the rest of the season. My actually my actually my star driver um of, of the day. I know I know he was voted as driver of the day as as well. So well, yeah, all in all, a really good day uh for, for Sebastian and also for Lance Stroll as well. I thought he drove a good race. I know he had one or two hairy moments um and, and during, during the race, but even so, um he was able to make his strategy work and was able to Hit, which meant that he was able to get out ahead of Esteban Ocon and also Antonio Giovinazzi as well. So yeah, really good drive from Lance Stroll as well, and really and really good points for um, Aston Martin as well, which now means that they're fifth um, in the in the constructors. Yeah, all in all, good weekend for for Aston Martin. Um, so we come on to talk about Pierre Gasly. Um, another fine showing from Pierre. Um, he's definitely taken on that 
team leader mantle uh, at AlphaTauri, and ever since ever since going back um, to the team uh, to Toro Rosso, um, he's he really has put in some phenomenal performances, some great results, and you know keep you know being able to look. Obviously, Monaco is a difficult place to to overtake, but you know keeping Lewis Hamilton behind him. Um, was by no means a, you know, was 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 great uh, for Pierre and um, another another fine drive qualifying another strong performance from Alpha Ta from him and Alpha Tauri. Um, he's yeah he's he's um he's he's been pretty good actually this year in terms of qualifying. He's definitely put the car right up there and has been regularly in in Q three. Um, occasionally there have been times where he just hasn't quite been able to convert that strong qualifying performance into really strong points. Um, but even so. Um, on on race day, um, Pierre definitely kept his nose clean, um, kept out of trouble. Obviously, he would have liked to have got ahead of um, Sebastian when when Seb uh, did did it for his, for his stop. But even so, I think there's a lot of positives that uh, Pierre can take uh, from from the weekend. And um, yeah, another strong showing from uh, Pierre Gasly. And um, yeah, you, you you just never know. You know, if he carries on performing at the levels that he has been doing, then you just don't know where he could be in 2022. Not sure, not sure where that would be. Um, but you know, even then, I, I'm sure he'd still be happy to be um, staying at Alpha Tauri. So yeah, really good showing uh, from Pierre and Alpha Tauri once again. Um, Mercedes. So not exactly the strongest of weekends uh, for Mercedes. But I have to say, I really did feel Valtteri. I have to say because on Saturday, you know, like you know, like Max, like Carlos, and Valtteri was on a was on a quick lap and definitely in contention um, for, for, for for pole on on Saturday. Um, and yeah, um, and, and to be fair, Valtteri drove well. He drove well this weekend. I don't potentially he might not have been able to um, be in contention for the win, but even so, he was definitely in for for, for second. Um, and then he had that unfortunate pit stop um, through no fault of his own, and it always. He always seems to be, you know, there's the times where, you know, Valtteri's just on the wrong end of, um, of, of, of pit, uh, pit, pit stops that Mercedes have, have, have had, um, where things have gone badly. Um, but yeah, really, really felt for Valtteri because, you know, it was just one of those weekends where, you know, Lewis wasn't at his strongest and, you know, Valtteri was actually doing a decent job and it was an opportunity for, um, Valtteri to try and, you know, you know, claw some points back on his on his teammate, um, but unfortunately that wasn't able to um, be the case. So yeah, I really did feel for Valtteri because I actually felt he was driving well uh, throughout, throughout the whole weekend at uh, at Monaco. Um, but you know, I think he's he's just got to keep at it. You know, the result the result will come for Valtteri, and um, yeah, I mean, I know, I know there'll be, I know there'll continue to be speculation around you know, Valtteri's future at Mercedes, but. You know what happened at Monaco. There's nothing that he's, there's nothing that he could have done um, about what happened, and that's through no fault of his own. But up until that point, he was he was driving a really good race, a good solid race. Maybe not. He maybe he wasn't as close as he would have liked to have been um, to to Verstappen to challenge him to win. But even so, you know he you know he, he was in a decent position to at least um, to at least finish second. So really hard. Um, really heartbroken for Valtteri not to um, pick up really strong points at um, Monaco. Um, but then for Lewis as well, um, you know, strategy is just, strategy is, it's just, just off colour this weekend. Um, but, you know, you're going you're gonna to have those weekends, you know, not every weekend is going to go perfectly. But in a way, you know, if there's one team that can bounce back from, from setbacks, you know, it's, it's Mercedes. So, you know, and generally, I think we head to Azerbaijan, plenty of straights, which should suit uh, the Mercedes. So, you know, don't be surprised if Mercedes bounce back at uh, Azerbaijan. And if one driver can bounce back, it's definitely, it's definitely Lewis Hamilton. So, look, you know, whilst he will have been frustrated with how uh, race day and also Saturday went, um, as I say, you're going to get those weekends where things don't go, go quite, quite smoothly. Um, but like I say, I believe Lewis will will bounce back, and uh, Mercedes will bounce back as well. So don't um, so don't count them out just just yet, um, even though they might be trailing in both the constructors and the drivers' championship. And then just really want to talk about um, Alpine and uh, Alfa Romeo. So Alpine very uh, difficult weekend for Fernando Alonso. Um, 
obviously being knocked out at Q1 um, on, on Saturday. And then, yeah, obviously, as, as, I've, as I've already mentioned, uh, Monaco being a difficult place to overtake. It was, uh, yeah, very, very difficult race for Fernando. So just wasn't able to make his way into the points. Whereas his teammate, Esteban Ocon, um, yeah, and, and not a bad weekend for the Frenchman. Another, another points finish. Another weekend where he qualifies Fernando. Another weekend where he finishes in the points above, uh, ahead of his teammate. And you have to say Esteban has been, he's had a decent start to, to this year. Um, I did predict that Esteban would be one of the dark horses and one of the drivers to watch uh, this this year. And, um, and I personally think that uh, he's doing a, he's doing a good job. And um, yeah, he's just, he's just got to carry on what he's, what he's doing and you now i'll tell you what if he carries on performing the way you know we talk about george russell and um, being in line for uh, a mercedes seat in the future but if esteban carries on performing and scoring points regularly then i think there's no reason why mercedes um, wouldn't be uh, wouldn't be looking at, uh, at esteban so um yeah esteban another good weekend uh, another points finish as well and also um and congratulations to Antonio Giovinazzi as well as so scoring his first point of 2021. And actually, to be fair to Antonio, he had a pretty good weekend in Monaco, so qualifying in top 10. And um, yeah, he, he, looked, he looked quick throughout the weekend. And um, I think Alfa Romeo, to be fair to them, but they have been they have been threatened threatening to score points. Um, I think they would like to score you know a few, you know, a few more points at, at this stage. Um, but like I said, they've been threatening to, to score points. And I thought Antonio drove a solid race. And uh, yeah, he deserved a uh, top 10 finish uh, on Saturday. But also on race day as well. Keep his nose clean. And um, yeah, really, really good point uh, for Antonio and the team. Uh, probably deserved. And uh, yeah, hopefully they can um, they can build on that. And uh, who knows? You know, if they carry on putting in strong performances like that, then you know maybe they will be... Um, in contention to fight the midfield, no, it's been in, in amongst the um, midfield even even more. Um, but yeah, really good point for Alfa Romeo and uh, Antonio, and uh, a good drive from the Italian. So that's the end um, of my review of the Monaco Grand Prix. Azerbaijan really can't come enough, and I think we're going to be in for a real classic at Azerbaijan. Um, we've we've always. Uh, had, some, had some really good races at Azerbaijan and don't be surprised if we're in for another uh, classic at, uh, at Baku and uh, yeah really can't wait for the race so if you want to talk things Formula 1 uh, you can message me on Twitter at Baggies20 and I'm also on Instagram Manish Patel 89 uh, and I will catch up with you guys and girls soon um, when I do my preview for the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. Au revoir everyone.